Hello and welcome to Secrets for a Successful Life. We are Sharon and Randall Benjamin. Have you ever loved, lost, and started living again? Well, we have our guest today, Ralph Bateo. Ralph, welcome to Secrets for a Successful Thank Life. You. Thank you very much. Ralph is a longtime educator. He and his wife, Lisa, have an eight month old son, Lincoln. Ralph, tell us about your first marriage and share some um, signs or incidents that the love was waning or falling apart. Um, so my first marriage was when I was 27. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely I fell in love with a woman and um, through, I had a lot of unsuccessful previous relationships that lasted mostly uh, up to six or seven months. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I met my ex-wife Christina and uh, I realized that she didn't, I don't know how to put it, she didn't really treat me the way the other ones had. She was a little tougher. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess my, my inexperience led me to believe that this is how you made a relationship work. Mm -hmm. You know, you sacrifice a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but little by little, I started to feel like I was in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. um, my feelings would get hurt constantly. I was constantly trying to prove myself. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, after enough was enough. Yes, you yes. Know? So so did, during that time, did you all seek any kind of counseling or assistance? We did. We actually went to two different counselors. Uh, we went to a male counselor and a female counselor. We went to the female counselor first. Uh, and we both, uh, we both sort of agreed that it seemed like she was on my side. Uh, so it, it didn't seem like it was fair because anything I would say would kind of lean towards me. Uh, then we went, uh, we went back to her for a second time. Uh, we said, no, that's enough. We went to the male. She had my ex-wife had researched and she picked him and he seemed to be on her side. Uh, uh, and So no objectivity. Ooh. Right. So unfortunately, it just, it was one of those things that it didn't work out for us. So at what point did you realize, okay, there's just really no hope for the relationship? Uh, we had separated and we were still sort of dating, I guess you would say, we'd see each other. We had a, at that point, my daughter had been born, uh, she's 17 now, but at that point, um, she was about a, a year and a half. And uh, I came to find out that she had been talking to somebody else already. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was just one of those. I decided that there was a lot of arguing. So I decided, do I have my daughter say, mommy and daddy stayed together, mm -hmm. but I'm really upset living here. I see them fighting all the time. They don't seem like they love each other or do I have a daughter that grows up in a divorced family mm -hmm. saying I know my mother loves my mother loves me I love I know my daddy loves me mm -hmm. um, and it's just one of those things so so, so how did you handle it the in-between time what were your emotions your feelings and uh, after the love was lost I mean now you're not married how did you how did you handle that uh, honestly it was when we finally decided, listen, you go your way, I'll go my way, mm -hmm. it felt like a uh, weight had been lifted off my shoulders. Mm -hmm. I was relieved. Um, and <laughs> to be honest, I started thinking about other people in relationships and starting a business, to, you know, you celebrate engagements. I thought about maybe starting a business, <laughs> celebrating people who are getting divorced. I know it's not a celebration, but some people go through a very difficult time. And for me, it was... I felt better about myself. So at what point did you decide, I am going to start living again? Um, you mean after the divorce? Yes. I, very quickly after that. I had a lot of outlets at that point. I was playing rugby, uh, and that to me was, uh, aside from my daughter and my dog at that point, that was my number one concern. That was my outlet. Uh, I, had, I know I had plenty of support from my friends, and that was another thing. Um, my friends really helped me through it. You know, I know a lot of times guys don't like to talk about their feelings, but I've been lucky enough and blessed enough with a couple of my best friends who really listen and 
don't take my side. If I mess up, they let me know. So I know I can go to them for honest input. How did you prepare for your new life? Uh, and how would you describe your new life now with your new wife? Oh, <laughs> night and day. Uh, so I, I, I guess it was about eight to 10 years, uh, about eight years uh, after we'd been divorced that I met Lisa, who is, uh, I mean, she is up here. Mm -hmm. You know, she put up with, with all my shortcomings. Um, but it was just one of those, I, I'd gone out, I'd lived my life, mm -hmm. I had my daughter, I, I, you know, that was my number one priority. And I had gone out and had fun. I'd gotten to go travel with the rugby team and, and do a lot of different things. Um, but it, it was just a feeling, you know, it's ironic because I wasn't looking for a relationship. Uh, I was bartending in Pennsylvania as a second job. Mm -hmm. And I had met Lisa previously. She worked at Brunswick Acres as a student teacher, uh, maybe taught once a year. And then uh, she just happened to show up mm -hmm. at, while I was bartending one night. Mm -hmm. And from that day forward, uh, I, I believe it was uh, April 7th mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that she came in, or April 1st. And it was one of those things for a week, I just, we couldn't stop thinking about each other. Wow. And it, it, it almost it filled my heart. It was mm -hmm. it was strange. It was one of those connections that you have immediately, where, you know, it, I didn't want to like I didn't want that to, that opportunity to go. And that past. feeling is still there. That yep. passion is yep. still there. You know, it's still there. How long? Uh, we have now been married for four years. Well, four years in in July. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, with the new baby and everything, yes, yes, you know how difficult yes, it is. Yes, yes. But uh, we've been trying. Now that he's a little bit older and a little bit more self-sufficient. You know, he started walking already at eight months. Mm -hmm. um, we try to go out and have a, a date night when we can. Yes. Um, and, and just do little things for each other. Um, so, what what are some lessons that you learned from your first marriage? that you would say you say now okay these are things i will do these are things i will not do and uh, a lot in this question but so and what advice would you give people who may be in yeah. a similar situation mm -hmm. uh number one i would say communicate mm. uh and even I, honestly i really think and i was very skeptical about mm -hmm. going to see a professional mm -hmm. um, for marriage counseling or for personal reasons mm -hmm. um but I would highly suggest going, even if things are terrific, mm -hmm. go to a marriage counselor. Mm -hmm. Because males and females, we think completely differently. Right. Uh, you know, uh, we interpret things completely differently. And by going to the marriage counselor, I was able to see, when I thought I was doing something really nice and sweet, mm -hmm. how maybe she would have thought, uh, maybe I was trying to hurt her feelings. Mm -hmm. um, so we we actually had a chance to communicate in a safe environment because unfortunately you learn all these uh, uh, strategies mm -hmm. for discussing and talking and working out your problems mm -hmm. and then you get mad and they go right out the window. <laughs> Forget them. You, yes, yeah, right. You don't apply them when it's you. Uh, as teachers, you know, you you work with the children and apply it to the situation they have. But at home, you know, sometimes you get mad and it. Just gone. Don't think of it. So yes. with with that other person, that professional, you always have a calmer voice. You know, she can say, "Okay, stop. What are you hearing?" Mm -hmm. um, so that was extremely beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, Great and it's really It's really worked out. It's it's strengthened our relationship. That's well, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, well, my pleasure. Your loving, losing and living again. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Yes, that's it for this edition of Secrets for a Successful Life. Thank you so much for joining us. And again, Raph, thank you so oh, much. We really pleasure. appreciate it. Thank you. Contact us at RandallSharonBenjamin at gmail.com. Connect with us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channels. We are Randall and Sharon Benjamin. That's it for this edition of Secrets for a Successful Life.